a friend sent me this photo of a Malabar squirrel today, and it inspired me to, to make this video about how can I even make sense of a world with purple squirrels in it? So I thought, I didn't think it was real. This is a squirrel that lives in Southern India. And when I saw the photo, it almost brought me to tears because it just, it reminds me of what a magical place the world is. And I had this feeling of like, if there are purple squirrels in the world, I will always be happy. But then I was like, wait, will there always be purple squirrels in the world? I just realized how much my photo here in the corner kind of makes me look like one of those squirrels. <laughs> well, anyway, so it sent me down a rabbit hole, or maybe you could say a, a tab hole. But I started to research Southern India. What's happening in Southern India? Well, there's a lot of desertification. Desertification in general is being caused by climate change, and it's rapidly on the rise with drought in a lot of different places. And yeah, I, I started clicking around just being like, how is the world doing? How's, you know, how's extinction going? And I learned that, first of all, I learned that I wouldn't want to live in a world with these goofy looking woodpecker birds from Louisiana, and then found out, oh, I do live in that world. So this was a bird that was just put on the extinction list. And look at the look at the subtitle here. A million more are at risk in the US. I didn't even know there were a million species in the US. I've known for a while that one species that I grew up seeing on the west coast of California, the monarch butterfly, look, just in my lifetime since the early 80s, has dropped by 99%. So yeah, I'm just like looking around at the world and being like, what else do we have here? Other purple things? Well, there's purple slugs, but of course there's massive extinction threatened with the oceans. And so climate change, where are things at with climate change? Well, here's a helpful table that looks at what is the course that we're on right now, uh, which is pretty much if, if we don't make any major changes, we're on a course to around a 3% uh, Celsius temperature rise by the end of the century. And that's, I mean, what does that mean? This is an article called uh, Ethical Maxims for a Marginally Inhabitable Planet. What, what, is a, what does that kind of temperature rise mean? We're talking about like three to six feet or up to 22 feet of sea level rise. So that's the path that we're currently on. I mean, there's, um the path that we've been encouraged to be on which is to really limit our temperature rise to one and a half degrees but look at the kind of rapid change we would need to make right now really dramatic change from the path that we're on and by the way the path that we're on it's kind of cheerful the way they say this today thanks to rapid growth and clean energy is there rapid growth and clean energy people i also look at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is this UN body that's delivered some of the worst news about climate change. You know, they really said, we've got a practically irreversible situation going on here. There's compounding, cascading effects of like, you know, the ice melts and that reduce, that releases methane, which causes ice to melt more rapidly and so on. And they said, but yeah, you know, we can, we can cut emissions in half by 2030. Can we? No. Oh my gosh, that's such an irresponsible thing for them to be saying. And so many people are looking to the IPCC for information about like, where are we at? How are we doing? What should we be doing? I mean, look at, look at here's a little bit of information about renewable energy or, or just solar. Solar is only about 1% of energy use in the world. Here's a little helpful question from Google. Where does 80% of global energy currently come from? Oh, fossil fuels. Okay. All right just what we suspected. And, you know, but, you know, maybe we can still transition. Maybe we can still, you know, turn it all around really fast. Well, the transition to clean energy is going to require a lot of minerals, a lot more minerals than we currently use. So an electric car uses all this um, copper and nickel, especially, and, you know, compared to conventional cars. So we've got to rapidly increase the mining of those minerals. Apparently wind and, you know, solar, these things use so many minerals that we've got to, we got to dig holes in the earth to get that stuff out 
do we want to dig holes in the earth? So Biden is like, yeah, we, we got to produce renewable energy. We got to we got to rely on our own domestic sources. And so there, there's really been a call to increase mining in the US. But what happens when you increase mining in the US? Well, you have to threaten a lot of really beautiful land and people. And so Oak Flat in Arizona is a sacred ground for the Apache. And of course, there's threats to uh, contaminate the water if this private copper mine um, goes in there. But I mean, at least Biden has at least disrupted some of the mining that was potentially really threatening. But like what mining isn't threatening? I, I was really happy to see that the EPA is trying again to block the copper mine in Bristol Bay, Alaska. Look at look at Bristol Bay. The pink and green fish. These are the sockeye salmon. I mean, they're just so beautiful. And it's one of the biggest salmon runs in the world. And this copper mine was really threatening to destroy that river. So, you know, but it's such a contradiction. We're saying we need all these minerals, we, we need to start mining them. And, but we can't, we just can't start digging in the world like that. And, you know, imagine we could start to produce a ton of renewable energy. We wouldn't really be able to use it without a massive amount of storage. So this storage is a really, really big problem. Like if we, it, first of all, we're building these giant batteries. This used to be a gas burning plant. I drove by it a lot when I was a kid uh, in Moss Landing, California on the way to see butterflies. And it's been converted into a lithium, a giant lithium battery, this thing, because fluctuating power from renewables requires that we store it. Yeah, here's some news. That battery in Moss Landing, California has melted down twice. They have to keep shutting it down because it almost keeps causing a massive environmental disaster. We're not solving the storage issue, y'all. And the other thing is, how do you get this ship across the ocean using a battery? You would need a battery that's bigger than the ship. So we're we're pretty much stuck continuing to use fossil fuels if we want to maintain the way of life that we have. So about maintaining that way of life. Meanwhile, we are being encouraged to save for retirement. I mean, first of all, do we do we want the planet to still like be there and be inhabitable to humans when we retire? Yeah. So what are we doing? Also, what what is she doing? What is what is this giant swimming pool? I mean, if she likes water and wants some exercise, here's my suggestion. Join the folks who are protecting water. Join the indigenous led movements to protect land and water. And and it's yeah, this I can't emphasize how critical this is. And you know, fill that swimming pool in with some good soil and start learning, particularly from indigenous people about how to take care of the land and restore land and, and feed ourselves because our food can't be coming off those big container ships. They, it just can't. And so here's a good article you can return to about, um, yeah, what indigenous wisdom we can tap to understand how to steward land. But yeah, there's also this encouragement. Here's, a, here's an animal that hasn't really come anywhere close to extinction, the piggy bank. Yeah, we got to save for our child's college fund. Like that that's what people are focusing on. That's what we're being encouraged to focus on. I found this instead, maybe instead of saving for the college, maybe we, maybe we get this book, Poo to Peaches. This is a composting toilet book for kids. This stuff is great. I mean, I don't have kids, but I recently was one. Okay, maybe not that recently, but here I am age 42. And I've been reflecting on what's been happening in my lifetime. Here's a chart of things that have things that are bad and their increase in my lifetime. Just the killing off of 68% of vertebrate animals, critters, 68% decline, not in species, but in just total living animals. And there's, you know, I've already mentioned the butterflies. And if somebody had told me, when I was a kid, that all of this was going to happen, I would have wanted people to do something really dramatically different. I would be like, I don't care about college. Yeah, I don't care. Like, do something really dramatically different right now. And, you know, we can look around at where we're at right now. And there's there's a tendency to not change anything dramatically because just today, today, I am okay. We look around, we're like, so we're, I'm alive, you're alive. We're okay. We're okay. But we need to look at the the time span, both of what's happened and what is about to happen 
And I feel like the question we need to be asking is like, what can we do so that we can still look children in the eye? We need to change everything. And you know, some of it is about teaching kids actual skills that can help us all survive on this planet. And it goes beyond that. Another thing that's really changed in my lifetime is the rapid concentration of wealth in the hand of hands of few a few people globally. Like um, you know, maybe this one is in the US. 85% of wealth controlled by the top 15% of people. Like you couldn't even fill that piggy bank if you tried, if you're most people. And so organizations like Resource Generation are making calls for the wealthiest people to give away all or almost all of their wealth and excess income, like give it away to social justice organizations in particular. And big picture, we need to face this reality. And I feel like I'm surrounded by people who are who are talking about climate and they're talking about justice, but no one is really talking about this. The, the massive change that we need to make if we want to stay alive on this planet, if we want all of these beautiful species to stay alive and thrive, can you imagine we need to reduce consumption, energy consumption, material consumption by 80%. How can you even get your head around this? It changes everything. And we need to be talking about this because of purple squirrels. <laughs>